M-Link Planner is a software for point-to-point -point and point-to-multipoint -point link planning and optimization. In this video, I will demonstrate the main features of M-Link Planner. For more details, refer to the user manual on our website mlinkplanner.com. When you start the program, a new project is automatically created. Basemap appears on the right side of the panel. You can select one of the preset base maps or configure your own custom base map by specifying a tile server URL. Map navigation is performed with the mouse. Use the mouse wheel to zoom the map in or out. When the map is zoomed into level 12 or higher, the application begins to download SRTM elevation data and tree cover data. The status bar will display the pointer's geographic coordinates and the information about the elevation above sea level and the height of the trees, if any. Sites are locations that can be connected via point-to-point -point or point-to-multipoint links. To create sites, go to the Sites tab and enter the name of sites and coordinates in any format. An easier way is to right-click on the right place on base maps and use the context menu to create a new site. The name can then be changed. You can also move the site you've already created. You can also import sites into MLink Planner from any spreadsheet through a CSV file. After creating sites, you can create point-to-point -point links and point-to-multipoint networks. To create a point-to-point -point link, you need to switch to the point-to-point -point tab. Then, use the right mouse button to select sites at the end of the hub. If necessary, the location of the sites can be changed right here on the base map. After the link is created, you can immediately build its path profile. Select a hop, then go to the Profile tab of that hop and click Generate Profile. You should specify the average building floor height, typically 3 meters, in this window. The OSM project database usually contains information about the number of floors of the building rather than the heights in meters. Therefore, building height in a pass profile will be based on the number of floors and floor height. You will also have to specify the height of the building for which OSM project database does not have information. Such buildings will be highlighted in red in the pass profile. The user can override the tree's height information obtained from the global forest change records and set a new value to be used in a path profile. Click OK and after a couple of seconds the information about terrain elevation and clutter characteristics along the path profile will appear in the table cells. The view of the path profile will be displayed at the top right of the panel. If you select a segment on the path profile with the mouse, the segment will also be selected in the Elevation table, Clutter table and on the base map. The application allows you to create a path profile by manually specifying all elevations and clutters on the path. M-Link Planner can calculate the height of main and diversity antennas using the clearance criteria described in the recommendation ITU-RP530. To calculate minimum antenna height, click the icon next to the desired antenna. In the window that opens, specify the optimization parameters. The height of the response antenna will be fixed at the current value. Once the required preferences are selected, click Calculate Antenna Height and the minimum antenna height will appear on the right. The Pass Profile image will display the criterion used to calculate the antenna height. 
Click OK to change the antenna height according to the calculated value. To discard the calculated value, click Cancel. The parameters and equipment configuration for each of these sites are specified in the Site A and Site B tabs. You can enter the radio parameters manually or import them from the REV format files that I used to describe the equipment in the Pathlos program. Mlink Planner supports any equipment configuration and diversity technique. On the Objectives tab, you need to specify your approach to determining the reliability of the microwave line and, if necessary, enter additional parameters to calculate the performance and availability objectives. M-Link Planner calculates path reliability and outage in accordance with the model recommended in the recommendation ITUR P530. To start the calculation, click Report and a calculation report will come up. You can switch between the short report view and the full report view. The short report displays only calculation results. The full report displays input parameters, calculation results, the path profile drawing, and the path profile diagram on the map. You can print the report or save it as PDF, Microsoft Word, or Excel. Reflection analysis allows the user to identify possible specular reflection points on the hub and evaluate the application of various specular reflection reduction methods. Diffraction analysis allows the user to estimate diffraction losses due to obstacles on the hop. Diffraction losses may be due to the inability to meet the clearance criteria as per recommendation ITURP530. To create a point-to-multipoint -point network, you need to switch to the point-to-multipoint -point tab. You can do coverage study for base stations and availability calculation for each of the hubs from the base station to the subscriber station. To create a base station, enter its name and specify the site where the st base station will be installed. After that, the base station will appear on the map. You can also see direction and width of the antenna sector. If you click on the base station, it will appear in the center of the map. The parameters of each base station are entered below in the corresponding tab. For each of the base stations, you can set its subscriber stations. To create a subscriber station, first select the base station to which it will be directed, and then right-click the subscriber station's site. The parameters of each subscriber station are entered in the subscriber station tab. Coverage study allows estimating the coverage from the base stations, that is, approximately determine the areas in which the subscriber stations can be located and roughly estimate the achievable link capacity in this place. The settings for calculating the radio coverage are set in the Coverage Study Details menu. To calculate radio coverage, it is sufficient to enter the parameters of the base stations and the parameters of a typical subscriber station, subscriber station installation that can be located anywhere in the study area. Coverage calculation is performed for the following conditions. As parameters of the base stations, the parameters entered for each of the base stations are considered except 
for the transmitter power which is considered equal to the transmitter power from the coverage study details menu. Transmitter power that is defined for the base stations will be ignored. The calculation uses the parameters of the so-called subscriber station installation, this typical subscriber station whose parameters are indicated in the coverage study details menu. The calculation of the radio coverage does not take into account the signal losses from the forest and buildings. Forest and buildings can be taken into account only with an availability calculation each of the links base station to subscriber station. To perform the calculation, click Calculate Coverage. You can perform calculation received power at subscriber station. The map shows those areas where a given signal power level is present at the subscriber station's receiver. You can perform calculation best server. The map shows the identity of the transmitter supplying the strongest received signal at each point. For each of the base station, subscriber station link can be performed availability calculation with a detailed consideration of all clutters along the path profile. This calculation enables you to choose parameters of the antennas and equipment for each link. Availability calculation is carried out in the same way as for point-to-point -point links Create path profile, specify the base station and subscriber station parameters for this hop. Click the report button. As with the calculation of point-to-point -point links, there is a short and full version of the link report. In addition, there is the report base station performance summary, which shows the maximum achievable speeds for each subscriber station. For point-to-multipoint links, all path profile analysis functions are available, as well as for point-to-point -point optimizing antenna heights, reflection analysis, and diffraction analysis.